This portal was inspired by the Tabletop Crafters Guild monthly challenge. The theme for December was Bridge Ambush. A Stargate is a bridge between worlds, so I figure that counts. The whole thing is made of XPS insulation foam. I cut two sheets 10mm thick for the base, and one sheet 12mm thick for the arch. To make the base, I cut two circles using my homemade circle jig and glued them together, trying to keep them centered. Pins help keep them aligned until they're dry. To make the body, I started out by cutting a circle, then moved the jig in a little and cut out a ring. I repeated this a few times until I had three wide rings alternating with two thin rings. By cutting slowly at a very low heat, there is almost no loss of material, so these will go back together really tightly. The power dial was on 1.5 while I was cutting these. While cutting one of the rings, I made a small mistake and let the jig shift slightly. This means that this ring isn't perfectly regular. In this case, I chose to go ahead and use it anyway, but bear in mind that if this happens and you want to replace it, you will need to start over from a fresh piece. As I was cutting the rings, I decided that the outer ring was too thick, so I made the others narrower and cut down the outer ring to match. I did this by putting all the rings back together and rejigging them. The cut isn't perfectly round as the gaps let the foam move a little on the jig, but I reckon it's good enough and it will not be a problem if you cut your pieces to the right size straight away. The final dimensions are 5mm alternating with 2mm. When I was happy with the rings, I took the wider ones and ran them along the fence to shave 2mm of one face. This brings them to a thickness of 10mm and allows the narrow rings to stand proud of the surface. Then it's just a question of gluing them back together. Even if you have access to hot glue, I suggest using PVA here because it doesn't add any volume, so you won't have any large gaps between the rings. I used lots of pins to keep everything together, making sure to position them in such a way that the two narrow rings stand out. You could use a 1mm riser to help here, just make sure it doesn't get glued on with the squeeze out. Once that cures, it's time to texture it up. This is one of my favorite steps, just grab a pen and a pencil and scribble on the foam. The process is exactly the same as the one I used on my obelisk video, linked below. I just took my time and made sure I didn't damage the two rings, as I was planning to make these smooth metal. With the ring textured, I cut off a segment, so I could glue it to the base. I wanted a 5cm opening at the base, so I lined this up on my cutting mat and cut it off with a fresh razor knife. Make sure you're using a fresh blade and side down the mat so you get a nice plum cut. And this is where I realized that I had had a failure to think. The arch was too large for the base. Instead of remaking the base, I cut two pieces from the offcut for the upper part of the base, glued these on and trimmed them a little. This gave me enough base area for the arch, so I could texture the base and glue everything up. While the portal was drying, I decided to make some crags to go with it. These are explained in an old Wilox Armory video, which is linked in the description so I won't be covering them in detail here. I really like this texture though, it looks a lot like bark, might be useful for future projects. As usual, I primed everything with PVA and black paint, then I undercoated the portal with a light grey. I did the stone first, because I was planning to use a lot of washes and heavy dry brushing on this. If I had done the inner ring first, I would almost certainly have splashed it. The stone got a whole lot of dry brushing with grey, ochre and ivory followed by a wash of paints grey. Once this dried, more dry brushing with ivory and a tiny, tiny amount of white. Next, I carefully coated the inner rings with black and painted the innermost ring uh, phthalo green. I don't use this color very often, but it's perfect for something like this. I followed it up with more dry brushing with phthalo green and primary yellow. The top part of the raised rings was painted dark brown, which I feathered to black near the bottom. I flowed up with ochre and yellow to build up some shine, and added a faint edge highlight. At some unspecified point in the future, I might come back and add some washes, shading and weathering, but for now I'm happy enough to varnish it and call it done. I think this is a fairly decent standard for a tabletop piece. If you'd like to see more projects for tabletop games, check out this playlist. And if you're looking to start crafting, but aren't sure what you need to get started, Check out this video right here. That's all for this video.
बाय